In a new piece, a journalist at The Atlantic claimed the president repeatedly disparaged the intelligence of service members, calling fallen military personnel, quote, losers for getting killed. Trump has denied making those remarks, calling it a disgraceful situation. So Democratic strategist Colin Rojero and senior director of policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute, Rachel Bovard, they're here to weigh in on that story. Before we get you guys to weigh in, the president actually addressed this last night at Andrews Air Force Base. Let's take a listen. Everyone knows it's totally false. General Keith Kellogg, who's a highly respected man, couldn't believe when he heard it. And he knows everything about all of it. And to think that I would make statements negative to our military and our fallen heroes when nobody's done what I've done with the budgets, with the military budgets, with getting pay raises for our military, it is a disgraceful situation. So, Rachel, I'll start with you, and I'm just going to put my cards on the table. Uh, I think it's awful convenient that this story drops hours after the Trump administration appoints an ambassador to Afghanistan who has affirmatively said he wants to withdraw troops. What do you think? <laughs> well, I think two things. You know, one, this is, again, the tyranny of the anonymous source that has plagued the Trump administration, which I think it's under my skin for a couple of reasons. But the primary one is that, look, all these people, you know, want to stand on principle and squeal on the boss when they think he's doing something wrong, but they don't want the consequences for it. Mm -hmm. And I am really troubled by, I think, the mainstream journalism that just takes it without any kind of, you know, critical an analysis. But I also think you're right. You know, Will Ruger, uh, who has been appointed by the Trump administration, is the real deal. Uh, he has for years, uh, he's a veteran himself, and he for years has been talking about getting the U.S. out of Afghanistan, has taken on the neoconservatives in the Republican Party very aggressively. And I think if there's anyone that can do it, it's him. And I think you have the military industrial complex who's made billions off this war, balking at the thought of actually having to get out. Um, so I do think you're seeing a little bit of a reaction to that. Yeah. Colin, there's a lot of detail in this article beyond just saying, you know, fallen soldiers are losers. Um, there's also an allegation that the president did not want wounded veterans in military parades. There was an allegation that when he was vi visiting the gravesite of John Kelly's fallen son, that he couldn't understand why he wanted to serve the country and, you know, and risk his life in that regard. And look, here's what I'd say, you know, it ring we don't know, we weren't there, all of that on the table, but it rings true when you see what he said about John McCain. Yeah, I was gonna make the same point. I think it tracks with his behavior entirely. I think, first of all, the saying in the military is that we leave no one behind, that no soldier is left behind. Donald Trump doesn't understand that. If you look at the way he's operated his administration, 217 indictments, he'll leave anybody behind if it means he saves himself. He doesn't understand that level of loyalty. He doesn't understand putting things before his own personal profits and or success. And so for him to say that he thinks people who were wounded are losers, I think it, you know, it tracks with what he said before. It's callous, it's sad, it is disappointing that an American president would even be accused of such a thing. But this is also the same president who when, you know, the intelligence community said that the Russians were paying bounties to Afghanis to Afghanis to kill American soldiers, he had really nothing to say about it. And so, I think, you know, the loss of military support for me tracks along right with that. It's not, I'm, I'm, I'm sadly not surprised. I, I will accept that, although I do think that bounty story had a lot more to do with trying to withdraw from Afghanistan than anything else. But you bring up a good point. Let's throw the military chimes poll up there. This is undeniable about some falling support with for the president within the United States military. 41% Biden, 37% Trump, 12% actually say third party, which is pretty much remarkable. higher than the general populace. Yeah. I think it's pretty Says interesting. Something. What do you think that stems from, Rachel? Because I've covered the military, you know, my early career was spent entirely on it. Enlisted men have always kind of been there with Trump. The officer corps was basically split Trump Clinton. This time around, it almost seems to be an opposite and more of a Biden friendly attitude. Where do you think that comes from? I'm going to be interested to see how this develops because, you know, it's there's a lot of tension, I think, about this question. And part of it is because I think the neoconservative movement that claims to speak for the military military has pretty much abandoned Donald Trump. Like they're actually yeah. endorsing Joe Biden. They're lining up behind Joe Biden. And I think there's a little bit of, I think, confusion about how this question you know, should be dealt with. And I think part of that is incumbent on the Trump campaign, to be honest, because it's one thing to say we should get out of foreign wars, and I respect them for saying that. That used to be a fringe position in the Republican Party. It was given mainstream airtime at their convention. But they also have to make the case for why the military still matters, why our brave troops still matters, and they haven't done that second part.
Well, and, and so I think, I think you're seeing a little bit of a backlash to that. That's a good yeah, point. I think that's true. And I also just want to say, like, certain things I've agreed with Trump's uh, approach more so even than what Joe Biden has said, like his, you know, if he could have followed through and executed more effectively on his approach to North Korea, I think, you know, having talks and trying to calm tensions, I tend to believe in diplomacy. On the other hand, I think the policy with Iran has been an absolute catastrophe and led us to the brink of war. So the record has been very mixed. Let's just put that on the table yeah. from my view in terms of foreign policy and following through on some of the promises. But Colin, one of the things that was really interesting to me in this Military Times poll, just reflecting over the past 10 years or so, is under President Obama, he always performed better with the enlisted men and women than with the officers. Officers tend to be sort of more conservative. You know, they were like John McCain types, frankly. This time around, it's the opposite. Now, Look, Biden is outperforming Trump, I think, both with enlisted men and women and with officers. But he's doing much better with the officers than he does with the enlisted. So there's almost been a flip, even as Trump's overall support has eroded um, among uh, active duty service members in total. What do you make of that dynamic and that shift? Because it seems to be emblematic of a sort of realignment that has happened overall in the Trump era. Yeah, I think a couple of things have happened. I think Donald Trump has been no friend to generals. He's he's had them in his administration. He has publicly outed them and had, you know, very kind of public arguments with them. I, I think to speak to what Sagar and Rachel said, uh, if you bring, if you communicate with someone, right, they, they tend to maybe want to listen to you and would consider voting for you. It tracks with what they're doing with the Republican, uh, with Latinos and Republicans right now. Democrats have not just ceded the military vote to Republicans this time around. There are a lot of groups, both Republican and Democrat, who are talking directly to veterans, talking directly to enlisted people, like Vote Vets and other organizations, and doing absolutely wonderful communications to them, whereas before the Republicans basically had a lock hold on that. And you know, I think if, if you just communicate with people the reasons why they should vote for you or why they shouldn't vote for your opponent in many of these cases, uh, you know, people tend to listen to that. And I think it, this is a case study for how Democrats can continue to speak to Latinos and how Democrats have been able to move, in some cases, this military block that is normally very staunchly Republican. Mm. Well, yeah. very interesting story. Thanks, guys. We appreciate your insight. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the long weekend, both of you. You too. Thanks, guys. And we'll have more rising for you after this.